Okay, let's talk about two ways to create torque, which adds, you know, that extra pressure, that extra oomph, in a strangling technique. Watch what Derek does. He's going to roll, and the rolling action creates the torque. So the action of breaking Jake down on the mat is the thing that creates the torque and the pressure on the neck and creates so, the right, choke. Okay, let's talk about two ways to create torque, which adds, you know, that extra pressure, that extra oomph in a strangling technique, okay? You want to add that momentum, that torque. Uh, the better I can create torque, the better I can create torque on his neck, you know, just like a wrench, you know, I, I want to make it wrench it tighter. So there are two primary ways that you can do that in a strangle. You can either roll him and create that momentum, which creates the torque in the strangle. And another way is to flatten them out and let Mother Earth and gravity do a lot of the work for you. When you flatten them out, he has nowhere to go, and you've got them trapped, and you can just strangle them from there. So it's, it's not as flamboyant as a roll, but it still is the same thing. It's still a way of creating torque, okay? You want to make that neck hurt. You want to make that neck hurt and tap them out. So the first one we talked about is the rolling strangle. So let's take a look at, say, a rolling single wing choke, kata hajime, and watch what Derek does. He's going to roll, and the rolling action creates the torque. If you do this right, he's tapping out by the time he lands because it's that, that rolling action, just like a throwing technique. You know, it's the same thing. You're batting this momentum, boom, and you finish it. And it, it's because you're the whole circle starts before you're even rolling. You know, when you're looping under it, as soon as this comes through, just stay right there. You're still you're pulling and you're starting that choke as you're coming through. So it, it's your weight helps it, but you're really starting it as soon as that loops under the chin and you're, you're coming through like that. So again, it's, if you think of it like you're turning a wrench, you know, you're going full circle with the, right. the gi collar. So look at that again. So the, here's the one, the rolling action creating the torque. So that's example number one. And there you, there you finish it. And he's finishing on a strong position on his buttocks. Okay, now the other way is to create torque. The other way to do this is to flatten him out. And again, Jake will be caught between the mat and Derek, and he'll have nowhere to go except where Derek wants him to go, which is in the direction of the strangle, the choke in this case. He's going to go this direction, and he will create the torque by flattening him out, flattening the body out on the tatami, and then choking as he goes forward. So take a look. He's going to go behind, get a rodeo ride, get his hooks in, all this stuff. He's going to flatten him out, and he creates the choke. Aim your head toward the camera. Oh, got it. Sorry. Do it again. Come this way. Head toward the camera. So he gets behind him. Lattens him out. Boom. Now there's a lot of pressure on that body, isn't there? And then he adds that. And when he does the choke, do the square choke so you can see the example. When he does the square choke, the the, the hadaka jime. If you guys can come around here and see this, he's trapping Jake's head in his shoulder, and now this driving forward movement as he broke him down. So the action of breaking Jake down on the mat is the thing that creates the torque and the pressure on the neck and creates so, the right, go ahead and choke. Back up again, real quick, to all fours. Okay, so when you're, you know you're gonna be applying this version of it, you've already got the space to get in there and you come through at the same time and you get your hand up on the shoulder so that the, the choke really starts as you're flattening him out right about here and then just getting your hands together and then putting your hips in it is usually enough. Now, and again, the creating of the torque, right? When he rolls Jake forward, he's pushing all the weight into Jake's face and upper chest here. And look at how Jake's feet are going to be off the mat because Derek is lifting him with control. That's why we say a lot of times your strangles and chokes start with your legs. Leg control is necessary before you get neck control. So if I'm sitting here like this, and I let him get his legs back on the mat, okay? See, he's, go he's gonna be able to get a base. Okay. Now he's able to fight through it, and he's already starting to turn. And again, there's, there's ways to, 
follow through and still get the choke, but it's much easier to just finish using what you've got to begin with. So wider knees, try and kind of get your, your feet pointed out or your, the soles of your feet touching so that you can like drive your hips forward and that naturally pops his up. Uh, and now all the pressures on the front without me even putting my arm So when he said pressure, again, it's all direct in this direction here, and we get the strangle, the choke, whatever configuration you want to do. It could be a lapel choke. It could be any type of strangler choke. But Sometimes I'll, even, I'll do this one with just the sliding choke. So I'll catch this underneath, because he's giving me one, but he doesn't want me to get the other one. And I'll just finish like that. But again, two types of weight creating torque, momentum. One to roll them, the other one is flatten him out and drive into him. And they both work. It's your preference. Some guys like to do the rolling strangles and had great success with it. Some guys like to do this, um, and it really does work. But the key things here, when you do flatten him out, make sure his feet are flailing in the air. You don't want to let him have a base. Can you do that one more time on the brody ride? Right? Sure, sure. Right, get up real quick. So when I'm coming in, I'm letting my knees come out wide so that when I come down like that, my, my legs come up and that forces his hips up. Oh, I see all the weight forward. Now, where's, where's the weight in the, Jake's body? It's in his upper chest, in the, in the face area, head area, and it's all, this is the direction. And that's the direction Derek is strangling or choking. Now, if you understand, these are just laws of physics. This is the way body, the bodies work. And if you understand that better, you're going to do judo, jiu-jitsu, not sambo. You know, sambo, we don't do chokes. But, you know, you're going to do this stuff a lot better no matter what you're grappling or fighting sport. So two basic ways to get the momentum. You have anything to wrap it up? Uh, it's still important to know both. I mean, you might be way better at one than the other, but you can't always rely on one or the other. You know, you might have somebody that you're only going to get the one shot at them, and they give you the perfect you know, situation and you have to use the more, you know, rolling version of it, they might be very good defensively and you just have to use your control to break them down and, and actually, you know, like torque to get them. So it's important to know both because they're both very ap applicable in ground fighting depending on who you're fighting. Um, so practice both of them, make sure you know how to do both of them. Key thing here is he's, he's always on a stable, Derek's always on a stable position, stable situation, and he's controlling the position. You always want to control the position, and if you think these like this way to create that torque, create that momentum, you will, you, you'll create these circumstances of practice in that way, and you'll do it in, yeah. in practice. You're, you're kind of just squeezing them into, like, space-wise, not necessarily like squeezing like this, but... You're, you're collapsing your control down upon them so that they have fewer and fewer options to get out of it. And then by the time you get the move, it's a foregone conclusion. Um, a lot of times we talk about like there's three options. Well, you know, take two of them out and they're going to go through the door you want them to go through. Um, and it's a very similar situation here. If you're not, so many times we see the lower belts, they get a choke or they get an arm lock and they, they don't like finish it and they get upset and they let go and they're just like, ah. Um, and it's like, no, he didn't take that back yet. You can still follow up. You can still reestablish your control and actually finish. Um, so it's really important to get that side of it. Don't give up. Continue to use your control. You know, collapse that sphere of influence down on the guy until he's got no other option left but to give it up. Keep like a wrench. Keep tightening it up. Okay, okay good. Pulling action creates the torque. If you do this right, he's tapping out by the time he lands. Oh, I see all the weight forward. 